So, supposedly, next month, November 2024, the elk fence is supposed to start coming down. Hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. Of course, I'm a pessimist, but I'm a experienced realist also. You know when ask yourselves why November is the time to do that? What, what are the excuses that the Park Service provided, by the way? The most obvious explanation for this, to me, is for the Park Service never to have to take down the fence. Because Trumpy Dumpty will be back in office, and we all know who supports Trumpy Dumpty, the ranchers, other planet killers, like Trump himself. So, I don't know, man. <laughs> It's pretty clear. A lot of things that are supposed to be good and a lot of things were put on the plate to uh, start to set things right uh, never happened. Never happened during the Biden-Harris administration. They were supposed to happen. Uh, didn't get there. Some things did, but a lot of things didn't. And, you know, when things are slated to happen at a certain date and time, you really should look at why that date was set. Anyway, here's the other side of that. One of the proposals for taking down the fence included just letting the cattle roam freely, which means basically destroying the areas that recovered from the previous period of time of ranching. What do I mean by that? Well, number one, unless you are a brainwashed ranch supporter, a fake uh, wildlife biologist, which is what the Park Service staff are, you know for a fact that livestock is just about the worst thing that you can do to habitat. Unleashing livestock is like unleashing a plague of 1,500-pound locusts with hooves. Let me tell you a story about when the elk reserve was proposed. One of the proposals, they had it wasn't just one plan that was presented, but one of the plans presented um, had to be rewritten because they saw, after removing the cattle from Tomales Point, that things had already improved so greatly that the carry capacity number changed. The original carry capacity number that they anticipated for the reserve actually increased because the living conditions, the uh, fauna of the area, improved so greatly that they realized it could now support more life. Man, I could go a lot of directions with that. <laughs> Just considering that letting nature do what nature was meant to do supports more life than what the superior species human beings that came over here and destroyed that system so that they could make money off of their commodity system while selling it off as, oh, we're uh, providing food. You're not. What you did was take food away from countless species and feed a very small percentage of the human species with food they shouldn't be eating in the first place. The, the whole farmers feed people thing is just disgusting. It's just disgusting. These are people out for themselves, and it just so happens that what they produce in their profit making business is stuff that humans can put in their stomachs. But those people need to have money because it's very expensive food and you shouldn't be eating it. And it requires a lot of the earth and a lot of resources to produce that little bit that feeds so few. And when I say feeds, I should be saying poisons. Maybe poisoned is a little bit dramatic. You know, you can drink alcohol and not die. Doesn't mean it's good for you. Anyway, we go back and look at nature's footprint that took thousands of years of animals and plants coexisting with each other to establish 
a working system. And if this was allowed to continue to make progress, even more animals could be supported there. Unfortunately, the neighboring uh, commodity crops that the ranchers grow to help feed their already, uh, <laughs> I was going to say overfed, but that's not the right word, but their livestock animals that do nothing but eat all day and destroyed the habitat out there in the process of eating the natural habitat and then get fed even more with uh, crops that are grown for them. Anyway, those invasive plants that are intentionally planted out there by people that we call stewards of the land uh, are really running amok in the elk reserve. And the Park Service has done nothing, done nothing about it. They're too busy uh, working as ranch hands. They're ranch hands that we pay the salaries of. We the taxpayers. We the public who actually own that park. We pay the salaries of ranch hands who continue to destroy the park. In the words of Dr. Judd Howell, nothing's going to recover if you have livestock there. One of the great lines he delivered when I was interviewing him. And this is a man who grew up on a dairy ranch. This is a man who worked as a wildlife biologist. This is a man who worked as a consultant for the Point Reyes National Park Service itself. His words, nothing's going to recover as long as you have livestock there. Man, I, I, I've been working on uh, exposing the goat grazing program that is sweeping the nation, particularly California. God, it's, it's just pure destruction. It's horrifying to watch. But what a great representation of what livestock do compared to what wildlife do. In any case, let's get back to the original point. Really, the ranchers kind of have their bases covered. If Trump gets elected, uh, I don't know, the Park Service may shut down. And basically, I'm guessing that those Trumpy Dumpty uh, millionaires living out there are going to seize total control of the land. Uh, if Trump doesn't get elected, and let's say that the Park Service does eventually take the fence down, the way that the Park Service operates when it comes to helping animals, they will probably delay this by another year. But looks like they found a way to make freeing the elk the same thing as feeding the commodity animals of the ranchers the healthy vegetation of the elk reserve. How many people have seen the border that separates the elk reserve and ranch land? It's as astonishing and stark of a contrast as you can imagine. Just on one side of the fence, suddenly there's life. Somehow there is green perennial life. Why? Because the plants that nature chose to survive in California's climate are there. And on the left is the never-ending destructive cycle of ranching. It, it, they turned a biodiverse, gorgeous jewel of a coast into a deathscape. And these are the people that we celebrate. Shit, dirt, and invasive weeds. That's what you get. Thanks, ranchers. Thanks for your contributions. Poisonous water. <laughs> trash heaps abandoned barbed wire even as the barbed wire remains laying on the ground the park service helps the ranchers put more fencing up it's amazing I mean it's mind boggling it sounds like a science fiction story that's how terrible the Point Reyes National Park Service staff are this brings up a few other topics and what, it's hard to bring up a topic of Point Reyes without pointing out a lie told by the ranchers and the Park Service. One of those is what it looks like when cattle and elk cross paths. The ranchers will tell you that the elk um, harass the cattle when in fact it is the cattle who displace the elk. So as these uh, bovines move into the elk reserve which is definitely going to happen. I mean, they want to eat 
that green vegetation. Uh, they get a little bit sick of the invasive weeds and thistles that the ranchers have caused to take over uh, the ranch land. And unfortunately, the way that livestock eat, which if you trace this back to California's history, explains why a gorgeous land that provided for a myriad of species was brought to its knees when livestock were introduced. Why could California support so many animals until livestock were introduced? It's the wrong animal. You know, even if I didn't break down the explanation, the evidence is overwhelming. You clearly brought in the wrong species. If, in fact, you wanted the working system to continue, which these people didn't. They didn't give a shit. <laughs> they did not care at all about the working system or the health of the land. Uh, European contact meant driving out the existing human beings, slaughtering the wildlife, chopping down the forests, <laughs> feeding uh, the vegetation that supported all the other life there to their commodity animals. And in a blink of an eye, it was over with. Thank you, ranchers, stewards of the land, people of the earth. <laughs> it's so absurd. It's, it's the exact opposite of the truth. Oh, man. It's hard not to uh, spiral down a lot of different negative topics when it comes to the lies of ranching. Anyway, so the cattle will basically take over and they will drive elk out of established areas. You know, the elk um, have little territories that the subherds have set up. Well, throw all that out the window. Throw all that out the window because commodity animals don't have any sense of such things. They don't behave like wildlife. They don't have any of the thinkings of wildlife. Uh, whatever ancestry can be traced back to wildlife is long, long, long gone. They, they just, they look like tanks with hooves that just march forward and destroy everything in their path, including, including the small critters under their feet, driving away big critters that might be in front of them and either trampling or consuming the plants in front of them. This is what will happen to the elk reserve. If this ridiculous proposal that says, oh, we're just going to let, you know, whatever happens, happen, take the fence down and give free range to the cattle. You understand that that is actually helping the ranchers. And I guarantee you, guarantee you the ranchers will shoot the elk when they have the opportunities to do it when no one's looking. So these elk are going to start roaming out of the area that they've been uh, imprisoned in for so long and will wander onto the lands of people who repeatedly, repeatedly call for the removal and or killing of those animals. And you think that these violent pieces of Trump trash that stockpile guns aren't going to shoot some of these elk? Basically, the cattle are going to take over. The elk population, despite their new freedom, will go down and the habitat that the elk had will be destroyed. The same way that California was destroyed when these people arrived with their proud, traditional way of life so long ago. Come on, people, wake up. Wake up. The Park Service is in the pockets of the ranchers. They are finding ways to make this benefit the ranchers. They have no interest in helping the wildlife. I almost forgot one of the most important parts of this. How many people were even aware that cattle have already gotten into the elk reserve? Yes, illegally, unintentionally, but it's happened. And they've gotten into other areas that they're not supposed to be in numerous times reported by citizens, by hikers, by people who actually care about the park that they own, never reported by the park service, never reported by the ranchers, because <laughs> it benefits the ranchers feeding their livestock what nature 
has worked so hard to grow and that livestock destroy overnight. So with that in mind, with, with the knowledge now that cattle uh, violate the lease terms of these ranches, that the cattle encroach upon areas they aren't allowed to go and cause damage in these places that they go. With that in mind, what do you think the punishment was? What do you think the infractions were? What do you think happened to the ranchers whose cattle they belong to? Nothing. The answer is nothing. You could have predicted that. Nothing. There are no consequences because the ranchers run the show. On the flip side, and this is one of the most incredible examples of hypocrisy. On the flip side, because elk sometimes come onto ranch property and do very little damage, <laughs> the ranchers want them dead. So if wildlife that supposedly the park service and the ranchers um, are cool with and at peace with, you know, it's supposedly a marriage of agriculture and wildlife out there. What a joke. Um, those people demand the death of elk who encroach and threaten their very way of life. Those are their words, not mine. Those are their words. But if the cattle do that, if the invasive species, if the animals that do not belong in point rays go outside of the least area where they can legally graze and damage and destroy natural habitat where they aren't allowed, there are no consequences. For one animal that actually should be there, there's a death sentence. For the other one, nothing. Oh, that's too bad. Try not to, try not to let that happen. <laughs> Point Reyes is crazy. There's a certain population of you out there that depend upon denial. You live in a false reality because that's the only way that you can keep going forward in your backwards state of mind. And this is basically describing Trumpsters, who are, of course, devote ranch supporters. And I want you people to go ahead and blatantly uh, say out loud that I'm making this up. Yeah, you know, that it's not true. Yeah. Okay. You know what I really want you to do? I want you to go find documentation that the footage I showed in this video was voluntarily reported to the Park Service by the rancher whose cattle these were, or reported by the Park Service themselves, the rangers, who always claim that they have eyes on the situation when they're trying to get uh, activists to shut up about all the animal suffering out there. Go ahead. Find it. Find proof that it was even reported, much less... Um, uh, any consequences were handed out as a result. You're not going to find it. You're not going to find it. But please, by all means, you provide the proof for once instead of just living in denial. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs>